I'm just going to make it sing a little song for me. <laughs> for decades, slow cookers have been a staple in our kitchens, acting like little automated grandmas cooking in the background over the course of a few hours. However, if you've been on the internet any time in the last five years, You've probably heard of Instant Pot, the wildly popular multi-cooker that can pressure cook, slow cook, sear, and more. The question is, do you really need one of these fancy, shiny new Instant Pots? Or will the little old grandma slow cooker still do just fine? Hannah and I are gonna cook the same recipe in our winning Instant Pot and our winning slow cooker so you can decide for yourself. I'll go first. Let's check out the slow cooker. Slow cookers are basically electric pots. Some have heating elements around the outside, some have heating elements underneath, and they can be really nice and cozy. You know, there's something very satisfying. I still remember a ski trip where my friend threw a bunch of ingredients in the crock pot. Before we went out, we got back and there was like homemade warm chili and it was like the most satisfying thing. So they can be really cool in that way. We went into our testing with a couple parameters. We love glass lids. That's one thing that was a must have on our list. Every time you lift the lid of a slow cooker, you release heat and you slow down the cooking progress. These things already take a long time to cook, so with a glass lid, you can just peek through to check the status. You don't need to worry about releasing heat, slowing everything down. Um, a glass lid will keep you nice and true to your recipe times, which is always useful. The other parameter was an oval shape. We love an oval shape. It's a capacity thing. You know, you can lay rib racks down, you can do whole chickens, you can just do more in an oval shape than you can in a round shape. The third criteria was size. We like six to seven quart models, and that is also a capacity thing. We've also tested mini and small slow cookers, and those are great too. But we think if you're just gonna choose one, a six to seven quart size gives you the most flexibility in what you can make. With those parameters in mind, we found eight models priced from 40 bucks all the way up to $140. We cooked super delicate, boneless, skinless chicken breasts, which is something, you know, they could take like an hour and a half. And then we cooked bone in whole turkey breasts, which is sort of a mid range thing, something around four hours. And then we also did big pot roasts, you know, which is something that can cook for seven to eight hours. Some of the models we tested were not good, not at all. You know, some of them cooked really unevenly. Some of them had hot spots, cold spots, others really heated up too hot and boiled the food. So our winner here got food within the safe temperature range within two hours, which is great. It he heated it up quickly enough for safety, but then it didn't go too far. It didn't heat beyond that into boiling the food. And a couple of the models did, you know, you can really get uh, tough meats um, when you overcook things like that. Our winner here, kept things at a braise so well for two reasons. One, it had insulation inside. You know, some of these were just very thin walls, but this one is relatively low powered with insulation. So it was able to cook nice and gently and evenly. That insulation helped keep the heat in and it didn't have to be super powerful to get that nice braise. The second thing was an intelligent temperature sensor. So this thing has basically a second layer of brains in there that keeps the temperature in check. It keeps it from going too hot. So you weren't, we weren't boiling things. If it gets too hot, you know, it'll shut it off and it'll keep it below a certain limit. They had a couple other features that we really liked. I mean, if you look at this interface here, it's so simple. It is telling you exactly what it's doing. You know, I cook, you know, I can select low, high, start, enter the time. It's very clean very clear, you know exactly what's going on. Slow cooking is an exercise in delayed gratification. This has been cooking for like five hours, but I've been off doing other things. You know, I've been cleaning my house, I've been working, um, and meanwhile, grandma over here has been cooking away. My house smells amazing. This pork looks like it's about done, but I really started this project hours ago. I cut up pork into two inch chunks. I had some orange peels, some orange zest, and some orange juice, cut an onion in half, and a bunch of herbs and spices, tossed it all together, and I really just started this, which was so easy. So turn it on, power, select the temperature, low, medium, or high, and then I set the amount of time. You know, and this took about, it's about five hours now. So super easy, very different than an Instant Pot, and multi-cookers in general, they often have literally 20 to 30 buttons, and we're talking dials and arrows, there's a lot going on. They do a lot, so there's a lot of controls. This is a simple machine. It's slow cooked. I think it's ready, so I'm gonna take a look at the pork. There is a bit of variation in slow cookers, so you always wanna make sure, you know, try it first before you call it done. Um, but here we go. 
beautiful, absolutely fork tender. It's gonna make delicious tacos. But I'm curious to see how Lisa is doing over there with our winning Instant Pot. Let's check it out. So Instant Pots or multi-cookers are basically electric pressure cookers. There's two kinds of pressure cookers. One that goes on your stove top, and then there's this one, which is a self-contained unit. Stove top pressure cookers, your grandmother used them, your great-grandmother used them. But newer models are really safe. They have lots of valves that release pressure. If there's any kind of problem, they will shut down. Basically, because it's a tightly sealed pot, when it's heated up, the boiling point actually rises above 212 degrees Fahrenheit. So it can go up to 250 degrees for high pressure. And that actually just makes the food cook faster. And because it's a sealed pot, you're not boiling an open stock pot or something, there's much less evaporation. So you use a little bit less liquid and it all stays in the pot. Flavors concentrate, everything cooks very quickly, meat tenderizes, grains and beans cook very, very fast and very evenly. And really, it's a great system for cooking because you get results much quicker. We recently tested a bunch of new models of Instant Pot and all its many rivals. We tested 13 models, and they priced from about $77 to about $250 each. We looked at two sizes, 8-quart and 6-quart, and we actually came to the conclusion that our favorite pot was this one by Instant Pot. It's the Duo Evo Plus. Um, I have the six quart size here in front of me. We found that you can do most recipes in the six quart size as well as the eight quart size. Although we slightly prefer an eight quart, six is fine. So we've done several rounds of testing of multi cookers over the years. I think I did the first one about 10 years ago and we've updated it ever since. Um, this one is our favorite and it really represents a step forward for the multi cooker uh, device because it has a few functions that we really love. One is this one can actually slow cook. A lot of the older ones were fine on pressure cooking, but they weren't that good at slow cooking. This one does a great job at both slow cooking and pressure cooking. So it's kind of an all in one. You don't really need that slow cooker, Hannah. The other thing it does really well is that it reaches its high pressure temperature a little faster than all the other ones. This one came in at least five minutes faster than the second fastest multi cooker, which is great because it means it's going to get to the point of pressure cooking sooner. We also found that the display was really easy to read and understand. It was very clear and that's helpful because some of these have like a thousand buttons and it's not really clear what they want you to do or what they're doing. And they weren't easy to customize for your own recipes. So they had some presets, but say you wanted to follow a recipe that you found that calls for a specific time or temperature or pressure setting, this lets you do that. It also keeps the food warm afterward. The other things that we really love about it is that it has this great switch on the top for releasing pressure. In the past, you always had to like push on the device where the steam is coming out, either with your hand or a spoon or something. This keeps the steam and your hand a little bit separate, which is always a good thing. Um, it has a stainless steel pot inside, which we love because no nonstick to worry about. You don't have to worry about that wearing off or chipping or peeling away. Um, it's not going to change and degrade over time. So as the appliance lasts, so does the pot. This one, as you could also see, had handles. That is a big deal. Uh, most of these pots in the past were little thin aluminum pots with nonstick, no handles. They're set down in the cooker. And when you go to take them out, say you're going to take the food out, um, there was almost nothing to grab with pot holders. Um, and they would spin around while you're stirring and sauteing in them. These handles are locked in place. They're sticking out of the pot. They're covered with silicone and they're nice and cool, even when the pot is hot. So all of these things represent some nice steps forward in multi-cooker land. Um, and this is the Instant Pot Duo Evo Plus. So you want to look for those words, Duo Evo Plus. Um, there is a Duo Pot by Instant Pot. It's not the same one. It's not as good as this one. The one thing that we were a little bit disappointed with this pot was that the sous vide function was not very accurate. It was off just enough so that we actually overcooked things a little bit and that was not satisfying to us. Um, so we think you still need a separate sous vide uh, device, but in, in everything else, we loved this cooker and it was really a step forward. Hannah and I both made our recipe for shredded pork soft tacos 
Um, she did it in her slow cooker. I did it in the Instant Pot, our winner. Um, this is really quick in the Instant Pot. I mean, you're cubing up the pork and then you're just adding some flavorings like two halves of an onion, orange juice and orange zest, oregano, a bay leaf. It's very quick. It's a dump and stir kind of recipe. You put it all in there. You turn it on, you set it for high pressure for 25 minutes, 25 minutes, not four hours, not six hours, not nine hours, 25 minutes. At the end of 25 minutes, which goes by pretty fast, um, this basically will start out preheating, and it indicates right here, it'll say preheating in the front, and then when it clicks over to press full pressure, um, you'll see a few things. One, the steam that's gently rising out of the steam valve here on top will disappear. And the little red indicator valve that the high pressure is on will go up. And it will switch over to cooking. And the timer that you set, whatever amount of time you need, I had 25 minutes, will start counting down. And you basically will, it will cook for the 25 minutes once it's hit full pressure. And then it will stop and it will switch over to keep warm. Now you have two options with a pressure cooker at that point. You can either quick release the pressure, which just means letting out all the steam at that point and stopping the pressure in the pot, or you could do what's called a natural release where you just leave it and it will over about 15 or 20 minutes gradually cool down and the pressure will release itself naturally. So quick release, you stop the cooking, natural release, you leave it. This natural releases for 15 minutes, and then you quick release any pressure that's left, which just means you're flipping this little switch on the top. The, the last bit of, bit of steam will go out, the indicator will drop down, and that means you can open your pot and take out your food. Now, at that point in this recipe, you see chunks of pork. They're very, very tender. They're very moist, and they're simmering in a sauce that basically is created from a very small amount of liquid that you've added, and the juices from the pork. And you're going to let this cook down. And so you switch over to the saute function, and it will just simmer and reduce and concentrate that, that liquid until it's coating the pork, and it's all in there, and it's really delicious. And then you're just going to toss it around and saute it a little bit on the bottom of the pot just to brown up the little edges and crisp it up. At that point, it's tender, it's moist, it's shreddable, and you're done. And it's all happened within, you know, 40 minutes, maybe start, start to finish. You're not spending hours waiting for that meat to tenderize. It's beautiful, moist, fall apart tender and just flakes. It's, it's amazing. So right now it's, it's sitting here on, on warm and I'm going to open it up. The little song kills me. <laughs> this is amazing. And beautiful it's shredded apart into gorgeous meat that is just flavorful and tender and wow so I'm gonna plate some tortillas um, I have them in our favorite tortilla warmer by Emusa I made these from scratch and kept them warm in here it's great because it's insulated and keeps them just the right texture. And there it is. Beautiful, soft tacos with shredded pork from our book, Multi Cooker Perfection. And the recipe is given both for slow cookers and also for multi cookers. So you can decide if you want to cook it fast or slow. I'm a big fan of these things. I love this Instant Pot. And um, I like the ability to cook things quickly and really flavorfully. As we've shown, our winning slow cooker made you know, delicious pulled pork. It does a really good job. It's got that big heavy duty ceramic crock that heats very gently and evenly. It's got a really clean interface. It's super simple to operate. It tells you exactly what it's doing all the time. It's got nice audible alerts. We love that about it. But overall, if you're in the market for a new piece of equipment, we do think that you should get an Instant Pot. You know, we've tested multi-cookers or electric pressure cookers for a long time, almost a decade, and really in the past they never really could do the slow cooking. It was always something that they just fell down on. 
The pressure cooking aspect, you know, we love. Basically, we love that it has uses very little liquid, it seals the pot, and it's very intensely flavored. Um, and very easy and very fast. You don't have to think six or seven hours ahead the way you do with a slow cooker. You can really do a whole meal and something that would take many hours in just about an hour. So that's always a great thing. This latest model though really nailed the slow cooking and that really made it great because you know, you don't need two separate appliances anymore. Yeah, it's really the next generation of them. And I have to say the ability to sear in the pot, then seal it up and cook, I mean, it's amazing how many dishes that saves. And, you know, I think you can really get burnt out in cooking, especially right now in these times. And this really, um, I, it's like a little sous chef for me in my kitchen. I, the fewer d dishes that I have to do, the better. And I think um, a good multi-cooker, like our winning Instant Pot, really, really helps there. We both know slow cookers have a few things going for them. They're great at parties. You can put them out on a buffet with some meatballs or keep your mashed potatoes warm on the holidays. But, you know, for me, I like the speed. I like the convenience of the pressure cooker a little bit more. And now that they can also slow cook, I'm moving on. Yeah, I am too. So for more information about all the equipment we talked about, check out the links below. And make sure to ask us all of your Instant Pot, multi-cooker, slow cooker questions in the comments and hit that subscribe button.